Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. People always imagine that the climate is changing and that it's caused by man. It makes them feel very powerful to feel like they can control the climate. In 2008, the Bureau of Meteorology and the Sydney Morning Herald announced the permanent drought in southeast Australia. And two years later, it rained so hard in Australia that it caused global sea level to fall. There was so much water sitting on the surface of the land in Australia that sea level actually fell. Alternating drought and flood in Australia is not climate change, it's their normal weather. In 1868, the Empire newspaper in Sydney wrote this article about the climate of Australia. 1789 drought, 1791 drought, 1797 drought, 1799 flood, 1800 flood, 1801 flood. If you go down the list, you can see what the normal climate of Australia is. Drought, flood, severe drought, flood, severe drought, extreme drought, extreme drought, and at the bottom, they have flood and drought in the same year in 1850. Whatever the current weather is, many people assume that that's the way the weather is going to be permanently. That's the mistake which the Bureau of Meteorology and Sydney Morning Herald made in 2008. In 1846, the Maitland Mercury reported on the change of climate in Australia. That great changes have taken place in the climate of Australia, all testimonies satisfactorily prove. The Aborigines say that the climate has undergone this change since white men came in the country. So people in Australia have always believed that the climate is changing and that it's caused by white men. Australian MP Craig Kelly appeared on the Piers Morgan show in Britain yesterday and Piers Morgan said the climate was changing and basically blamed it on people like Craig Kelly. So really nothing's changed since 1846. In 1871, the Brisbane Courier published an excellent article titled Imaginary Changes of Climate. It's an extremely well-written article making fun of climate alarmists like Piers Morgan. A plentiful crop of speculation from weather prophets and projectors and half-instructed meteorologists and all the philosophic tribe of Laputa in general, to whom the periodical press now affords such fatal facilities. Every season is sure to be extraordinary. Almost every month one of the driest or wettest or windiest, coldest or hottest ever known. Much observation which ought to correct a tendency to exaggerate seems in some minds to have rather a tendency to increase it. So nothing has changed. Every season is still sure to be one of the driest, wettest, windiest, coldest, or hottest ever known. Here are some typical headlines on Google News Today. 2019 was Australia's hottest and driest year on record. 2019 was Australia's hottest year on record. Feeling the heat. 2019 was Australia's hottest and driest year on record. Climate change can supercharge Australia fires to more extreme heat drought. Climate change has Australian wildfires running out of control, experts say. This sort of hyperbole is exactly what the 1871 article in the Brisbane Courier was talking about. Then the press started circulating this fake image, which was supposedly taken from the International Space Station, showing all of Australia on fire. The New York Times described the fires as an atomic bomb. The Guardian, who predicted that Britain would have a Siberian climate by the year 2020, says, the Australian fires are a harbinger of things to come. Don't ignore their warning. Fires are more frequent, more damaging, and more terrifying. A symptom of the new age that I call the pyrocene. Piers Morgan told Member of Parliament Craig Kelly that virtually your entire country is eviscerated by fires. It's quite extraordinary. The Wall Street Journal said, Australia's wildfires are so hot, they're generating thunder and lightning. This is pretty inane reporting. Wood burns at the same temperature now as it always has in the past. Forest fires have always caused thunderstorms. Many thunderstorms are formed simply by the sun warming up the ground surface in the afternoon. You don't need extreme heat to produce a thunderstorm. This headline is absurd, but the mindless anti-science rantings of the press is fairly entertaining. The image of Australia burning, which journalists were passing around, was completely fake but it got the propaganda job done, with people like Piers Morgan claiming that all of Australia is on fire. NASA satellite images show that actually a very small percentage of Australia is on fire, down here in the southeast corner and a little bit over in the southwest corner. There's not a lot of fires burning anywhere else. 
This is a close-up of the fires in Southeast Australia, which you can see pretty clearly in this photograph. And this is the region of fire in Southwest Australia. But the vast majority of the country has no fires. Many of these fires, possibly most of them, were started by arson. Arson really has nothing to do with climate change. The New South Wales volunteer firefighters say that the fires have nothing to do with climate change and everything to do with fuel loads. Australia has bad bushfires just about every year. In 1983, 2,000 homes were lost and dozens of people died. On January 13, 1939, it appeared that almost the entire state of Victoria was on fire. And like this year, those fires were lit by the hand of man. The 1939 Royal Commission concluded that the fires were largely due to ridiculously inadequate controlled burning, just like this year. In January 1906, Mildura had 124 degrees Fahrenheit or 51 degrees Celsius. That's the hottest temperature ever recorded in Victoria, and the next day almost all of Victoria was on fire. The hottest month on record in Australia occurred in 1896. The New York Times reported a temperature of 127 degrees in the shade at Adelaide. And on February 6, 1851, most of Victoria was on fire, and Melbourne reported 117 degrees in the shade at 8 o'clock in the morning. If you asked a typical climate alarmist like Piers Morgan, he would almost certainly tell you that Australia is getting drier. But the exact opposite is true. This graph is from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, and it shows that precipitation in Australia has been increasing since the year 1900. However, this year was the driest year on record. It was slightly drier than 1902 during the Federation drought. But the trend is strongly upwards. This year was an anomaly. Australia has had a lot of very wet years since the 1970s. In this graph, I plotted Australian precipitation on the y-axis versus atmospheric carbon dioxide on the x-axis. You can see that as carbon dioxide has increased, precipitation has increased slightly too. There's no indication that carbon dioxide causes drought in Australia. Now let's look at what caused the heat and drought in Australia this year. This is an animation of sea surface temperature anomalies from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Blue colors mean that the water is unusually cold. And as you can see, Australia was surrounded by unusually cold water during much of the year in 2019. Cold ocean temperatures are known to cause drought. Drought causes dry soils, which causes heat. Heat and drought cause fires. The conditions in Australia this year were caused by cold ocean water, not by global warming. There appears to be no limit to the superstition and misconceptions of climate alarmists. Piers Morgan was lecturing Craig Kelly about Australia reducing CO2 emissions, but Australia could drop right off the face of the earth and would have almost no impact on atmospheric CO2 levels. That's because China and Asian countries dominate the CO2 emissions in the world. And they are building hundreds of new coal-fired power plants. There's nothing which Australia, America, or Europe can do to reduce CO2 emissions because countries like China and India don't care about our climate neuroses. In 1871, the Brisbane Courier understood that climate change is imaginary. And 1871 was also the year of the worst forest fires in U.S. history. New York Times, October 7, 1871. 150 miles swept by fire, men, women, and children fleeing for their lives. Immense loss of property of all kinds. Chicago Tribune, October 7, 1871. St. Paul, October 6. The Great Fire is still raging with unabated fury. And on the following day, Chicago burned to the ground. Massive fires burned all around Lake Michigan and Lake Huron that day. A gigantic fire burned around Green Bay, Wisconsin and destroyed the town of Peshtigo. More than a thousand people died there. Many other towns and cities were destroyed around Lake Michigan and Lake Huron that day. Nothing that's going on with the climate is any different than what's happened many times in the past. And there's nothing we can do to reduce CO2 emissions anyway. Global CO2 emissions are largely out of control of Australia and the West. They are controlled by Asians. That's very difficult for progressives to accept. 
We all need to work together to put an end to this climate madness and superstition. And visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.